Today I want to talk about using power over Ethernet in your home. There's lots of reasons why you might want to do this, and let me just list a few of them. Uh, first and foremost, it allows you to run a single wire to all of your devices. There's no need to find a power outlet near a wireless access point. There's no need to run an extra wire to your home automation server that might be tucked away in the ceiling of your basement. In addition, you can provide power backup for things that are in remote corners of your house, things that you might not want to go away if you don't have power. For example, security cameras. As long as you have a switch that's hooked up to a battery backup and providing power over Ethernet, the things that are connected to that will stay alive for as long as your battery backup is running. My silly mind, I was thinking, well, that's great. I can use my home automation stuff, uh, even if the power is out, because I, I still have my battery backup. All my little switches on the wall will work. And then what? I don't have power in the house, so the lights and other things I have aren't going to work. So not a big deal. The fact of the matter is security cameras work. The... Uh, Internet works as long as the internet is running. And surprisingly, when power goes out in my house, quite often the internet's still alive. And other things are all alive and working as long as the battery backup is alive. You gotta make sure that your power over ethernet source is up to the task. There's multiple protocols and you just wanna make sure you have the right protocol for the things you're trying to power. The more modern ones should be just fine. I use Ubiquiti gear and whatever I plug into them, it just works. I don't have to worry about it. But you do want to make sure that it is up to the task and you have to add up the power of all the devices you're using. If you've got one switch that's powering 15 devices, all power over Ethernet, you want to make sure you're not running out of headroom. Take a look at the maximum power that your device supports. They sell adapters, which work really nice for powering devices that don't have built-in power over Ethernet support. And I'll show a few of these, the ones I use. Just make sure that they have the correct voltage and amperage. For example, if you have a 5-volt adapter and your device requires 2 amps, then you better make sure that you buy an adapter that supports 5 volts at 2 amps or better. Even if you don't have power over Ethernet built into your switch, you can still buy the single line devices that will uh, inject power over Ethernet into the Ethernet cable. So you don't have to have an outlet right next to the wireless access point that you've mounted in your ceiling. Let me show you a few examples around my house. The doorbell is one of the first things I hooked up with power over Ethernet. You can see right here that this device is inside the ceiling panel in my basement. There's no way I was going to be able to run AC power to that conveniently. So I have a Ethernet wire running to the device, which goes to the doorbell. So rather than relying on battery power and sketchy Wi-Fi, the doorbell runs over power over Ethernet and it's connected to the network equipment via Ethernet. Here's a Philips Hue hub. If you get Philips Hue lights, you have to buy one of these hubs. And if you ask Philips, they will tell you they don't support power over Ethernet. You have to use their power adapter, which stinks because these hubs are exactly the kind of things that you want to hide in the basement somewhere. So using PoE for a Philips Hue hub and other hubs definitely is a topic of debate. Works for me. I'm using a 5-volt uh, adapter delivered over a 5.5 millimeter round plug. This is a device I'm using from Amazon. And the only issue is that the 5.5 millimeter plug has different inside diameters. And the one that comes with the adapter has an inner pin that's larger. So the plug that you get on this adapter I got from Amazon won't fit. The center pin is too large. So what I did is I ended up buying a adapter plug converter that converted 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter internal diameter to 5.5 millimeters by 2.5 millimeters diameter. Raspberry Pi is a real easy 
candidate for power over ethernet. I use this for Home Assistant. It's an easy option because there's a standard Raspberry Pi hat available that accepts power over ethernet, provides a small fan to cool the device. And this is the PoE hat that I bought. You might need to buy a case that has room for the power over ethernet hat. And I ended up buying this case. Here's an Odroid C2. You might not be familiar with the Odroid C2 and other Odroid devices. This actually is a competitor to the Raspberry Pi 3. And it was actually had better specs than Raspberry Pi 3. This was a device that was available as an option a couple years ago when you could not buy Raspberry Pi devices anywhere. They had all dried up. So I bought these Odroid devices and they worked just fine for small servers. For this one, I bought a PoE adapter that had the micro USB jack on the end. And this is the adapter that I bought. Network switches are another place where power over ethernet is a great idea. In fact, it's a perfect match because you have to run a network cable to the switch anyway. So why not have the power to the switch go over the cable? Uh, this switch is uh, running, this is a 10 gigabit ethernet switch that I have, and it's running over power over ethernet. And another area where power over ethernet just makes sense is wireless access points. Here's one in my basement. I have a couple others throughout the house and the cable runs through the wall and goes to a switch at the other end, but I don't need to run power to this device. There are other things that we can use power over ethernet for. Uh, another good example would be the security cameras. There are plenty of other devices. I have other hubs in the house, which I didn't show. Uh, the reason I didn't hook those up, one of them is the, uh, the RF hub that I use for controlling ceiling fans. But that one's inside a cabinet and sitting right next to a power outlet. So I didn't really feel the need to use PoE for that. Likewise, I have another one that's a infrared blaster for controlling TVs and things like that. And that one is sitting in a place where it doesn't need to be far from power. With that said, power over ethernet is really neat. Once you get into it and you have the right devices, you can have all your network devices covered by battery backup with clean power, and you don't need to run power wires everywhere. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching.